Right then, this is how we're going to do it. Taylor and Georgia will go in the same lane as Sophie and everybody else in the same lane as Mary. Take your marks. Up. Georgia and uh, Brile, you can just tread water for a second because Nikita's got to do one more, get it right. Three weeks out from New Zealand Opens. This is their one chance for the swimmers to qualify for the World Champs in Glasgow. Glasgow opens the doorway to Rio next year. My job is to get as many swimmers there as I can. Feeling good mentally, just hoping I can qualify for Worlds. Down in Wanaka, it's a bit lonely because there's not many para swimmers, but up here it's good fun seeing everyone. Hamish, hey, see how you go, mate. Three threes, 100 free, 100 choice drill, 100 swim. The last 15 into the wall, I want it to practice a race finish, all right? It's quite weird having a lot of para people in the same two lanes because normally I don't have that at home, I only have me, myself, and I in that lane. When so you're on those it. blocks, picking your spot, that's where I'm going. I'm going there and I'm going to get there as quickly as possible. And we already know about the, you know, not making a splash. We want to go through the tiny hole. A year ago, she really could barely dive. You know, she was really, really very weak. And in, in just over a year, it's got to that. So, yeah, just got to keep working. Keep your head down. Yeah, don't look up, OK? You're that close to getting it right. But every time, the head is just a little bit high. Take your marks. Up. Training's been going well. I've gone under the qualifying time twice now, but it doesn't really count for anything um, unless I do it, yeah, unless I do it this week. Like, just because the coaches have it on their watch doesn't mean they're, they're going to give me the spot. One thing you can't replicate are the nerves and the, the occasion, but if she sticks to her game plan and follows the processes that, you know, to enable her to swim fast, she should go well. Good girl. 39.8. Nice and relaxed as well. Excellent. When it gets this close to a meet, nutrition and training and everything changes. So we've we've really widened up on the training. So we're only doing like two and a half, three K sessions. Where usually we do six to seven. The intensity is dialed right back, just so you're not you're not in recovery mode when it comes to a meet. You're already fresh and ready. Jesse's not had the best last six months. Uh, he, he's been out in the water a lot, but he's got to go very, very close to his personal best time in the in the 400 freestyle to qualify, and he's got to do a personal best in the 100 backstroke. It's a big ask. I've had a few names for my leg over the past wee while. Um, I used to get called Robo Kid, and uh, people just call me the kid with one leg. That was kind of who I was. I guess I see myself as a regular 18-year-old guy who has a passion for swimming. Morning. It was training? Yeah, it was all right. A bit cold. Jessie's actually part of a big family. We've had five kids at home. Obviously, there's Jessie, Brittany and Courtney. And then there's Angel down here who's hiding. Um, <laughs> and then she's got a brother as well, so both of them are our foster kids. I'm looking at moving up to the North Shore <laughs> and then uh, training at the High Performance Centre up there. I think the financial side will be really difficult. Being able to afford rent and utilities and not having to pay for food usually and all that, so it'll be yeah, quite tough, I think. I think it was kind of a dream being able to go to the Paralympics and get a medal. It's, it's been what I wanted to do for a long time. Uh, now it's becoming a bit more real. Jesse has been an amazing kid right from word go. He got through varying surgeries and bits and pieces as a, as a little lad. And we were told he might walk by the time he was three. And at 17 months, he was standing up next to me at our wedding. And if I look at all of these, that's what it is. It's Jesse's dedication that's got him to where it is. Jessie was born with a limb deficiency. 
Jesse, his main event is the 400 freestyle. As a lower limb amputee, it's very unlikely that he's gonna be competitive at the world stage in sprint events. Sprint events in parasport, but his classification, S9, tend to be dominated by those swimmers with two legs. However, swimming is mainly an upper body sport, and the kick tends to give you a good position for which to use your arms to pull. So over the longer distances, Jesse has the opportunity and the ability to be more efficient as well as stronger than his opposition. And that's really where, where we see the, the, the strengths of Jesse. I'm um, year 12 at Cambridge High School and swimming's sort of my main thing. So I have to sort of put school behind sometimes and I guess just focus more on my swimming. So I'm not like, I'm not dumb, but you know, I guess you could say I'm an average student and everything's going all good now. So hopefully school continues this way until I decide what I'm going to do with my swimming and stuff. Economics. Right, so today these guys are looking at the economics of the Cricket World Cup and its effect on New Zealand. In class we're studying um, the Cricket World Cup. Uh, I'm not too happy about this because I don't watch cricket and I don't like cricket either, so yeah, it's not very interesting, but I guess we still have to do it. I'm quite slow at typing, so it doesn't really help if I try to use a keyboard because it just takes ages. People call me Nikita No Hands. Come on, Nikita it's No Hands. It's not really offensive to me, it's actually kind of cool. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I got no hands. Yeah, can't do much about that. But. I just remember my mum saying, into school swimming? Oh, that chick with no hands is going to kick your ass and she's going to be <laughs> so good. I was like, what? And then I watched her race and I was like, oh gosh. The only thing I can't do is my shirt buttons. Yeah, Steve almost put my cap on the wrong way. I can't wait for Wales this year because I actually have to defend my title. Now I'm top, so I have to defend everyone else. So it's going to be a mission, but I know I can do it, so yeah. And Nikita was born without hands. And Nikita, she is this super larger than life, real bubbly character, you know, always joking, always, you know, she's just real fun, but intensely competitive. The desire to win, the desire to smash her opposition, it's as strong as any athlete I've ever seen, and, and it comes through when she races. She's a performer. Uh, I think one of the terms that goes back from when I was younger was a, a big time Charlie. She loves a big occasion. So going into the call room for Nikita, she might tell us, oh, I really hate it, it's really nerve wracking, but it, it really fires her, her engines, you know, it really gets her going. I've got achondroplasia, means I've got a short, short stature. So you were backwards sore swimming this morning, was it? Yes. Yeah. Um, when I was doing backstroke, um, so I, I, like, I couldn't move my leg at all. Maybe we might back off in any swim trainings until the competition, just to let things settle down. And we'll get you doing a bit more physio before you head up north and getting you fit for racing next week. Having a back injury this close to opens um, isn't ideal. I feel annoyed at myself for getting this injury. People with achondroplasia normally are a bit more prone to back injuries since they have a much more bigger curve in their back. Uh, these are the medals from previous regional summits. My main event is the 400 freestyle and I'm four seconds off qualifying for Worlds. It seems like a lot, but literally it's just half a second each length, which from all the adrenaline it opens, I think is quite possible. So when you get up on the blocks next week and you're ready to go, what are you going to be thinking about when they blow that whistle? Um, process of the race and how I'm going to pace myself. Try hit 43 all the way through the race, um, then decrease that time towards the end. Yeah, so nice and strong on that breath, so really think about keeping your arm out. Go! 
training's very hard at the moment. Taking it pretty seriously, but I'm still thinking about school and schoolwork's still a very high priority on my list. Hamish McLean is a short of stature athlete. Every time he swims, he's usually taking two strokes for your average swimmer's one. He's kicking twice as hard to complete the same kind of uh, kick cycle that an average size swimmer would do. He's got to have great endurance, great ability to hold his technique over that period of time. Hamish is really unique in that his technique is perhaps as good as anybody in world swimming. He's just uh, just a lot smaller than the other guys. I was born in London and yeah, I've just been a full-time uni student for three years. That's definitely what I want to continue doing. I'd like to sort of continue doing stuff in academia. I always have done sport. There was not a sport I didn't try. But in terms of being a natural athlete, I have to work harder on actually having that link between my mind and my body and, and, and what I'm trying to do. So I'm not sort of like naturally gifted in, in that respect, but hopefully hard work can get you part of the way there. Nothing has taught me uh, the importance of kind of my own self-belief and my own psychology like, like sport has. Um, and I don't think anything can teach you that quite like trying to push through that pain barrier or reaching that state where you honestly just, it's like your body is completely countering your mind. Everything's telling you to stop and telling you that this is wrong and that, you know, the hard one, the system's all flaring off. Um, but that's, that's quite an amazing thing to learn and to keep learning and to experience every day. I think that's, um, yeah, it's quite unique. <laughs> Georgia Gray is fairly new to the sport. She's been swimming for a long time, but never really in the kind of, at the kind of level or the capacity of, of, of being an international para-athlete. She's improving every day in the pool, and she's also improving as an, as an athlete outside of the pool in the, her approach, her mental toughness, Everything is starting to come to place. She's certainly one with a bright future. This World Championships will hopefully see her progress a little further up the ladder, hopefully breaking well into the top 10 in the world. And who knows, at the rate she's progressing, um, she could do very well. It's always tough to get everybody back, you know, get everyone back and going on first thing on a Monday morning. So Monday is usually a aerobic base set, but we're getting this close to trials now. These guys are... They, 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 you know, they're beyond the early stage of the season. So Jesse, for example, Jesse's average training sets will be between five and 6,000 metres, uh, which he'll do in two hours. Georgia being an upper limb amputee, kick is obviously far more uh, important for her. So this morning we start off the week with a big kick set for her. It's a kind of a steady start to the week, in my opinion, anyway. So uh, my PB is a 31.1 for 53 and I need to get a 30.89 so like sort of two cents per second which is like a good dive or <laughs> a bad dive kind of makes, makes a big difference. So yeah, I haven't actually done the qualifying time before so for me to, to qualify this year well, I'll actually have to swim the personal best. I'm pretty nervous about it to be honest but uh, at the same time, I'm also really excited, and um, I think I think me and Gary have done the preparation well, and we'll be ready. Uh, this morning, after these guys finish, they'll be going down into the gym, and they'll do a, a really tough session with Marissa, our strength and conditioner. Morning, kitties. <laughs> okay, so we've got your programs today. You guys have done your movement prep, eh? Yeah. yeah. By 11.30 in the morning, they've already done two hours in the pool, they've done an hour in the gym. Um, you know, that's a, that's a pretty tough start to the day, and then they'll be back in in the afternoon. Our afternoon training sessions tend to be the times when we do our really, really hard work. Jesse and George are very driven young athletes, because they know exactly what they want, and they know how to work hard to get it. So. Um, 
George is one that will push and push and push and we actually have to pull her back a little bit, which is a better problem to have than someone that you're trying to motivate. And Jessie is very motivated, very driven. They need to push the boundaries a little bit to, to get the performance gains to be the best they can be, but it also has to be very well monitored and closely um, managed to make sure it doesn't go into a, a situation that requires some sort of intervention or treatment. Anybody who wants to be an Olympian or a Paralympian or a top professional athlete, they make great sacrifices, but these guys are right, they're right up there. My background originally was uh, in football. I was uh, uh, an average football player, but at the time I thought, I really work hard at this. I've given everything to this and thought that I'd done a lot. Now when I think back on it and I compare it to what the swimmers do and the way they commit themselves to their sport from such a young age, I realise that it's, uh, it's night and day that these guys, their commitment, their, the amount of work that they put in and the amount of focus that they put in from real young ages, from 11, 12 onwards, they do so much more in the pursuit of excellence. The New Zealand Open swimming champs, times at nationals, decide a place at the world champs in Glasgow in three months. Today, as a coach, there's nothing more you can do. Um, you've, you've done everything, you've done everything. The, the swimmers have done all their work. Uh, they're not gonna be any fitter. This is it, this is what they've worked for. On New Zealand Opens, it is a little bit cutthroat. You know, if you don't qualify, there's no exceptions. It's, that's it, you know, you miss out. It all comes down to focus, and as soon as you know you, that focus switches off, that's when you're going to have a bad race. So it's always, always the focus has to be on. Twenty-one. I can do that. Have you got that, John? I do one twenty. Beautiful. For the younger guys, it's good for them to experience events like this, where there's TV cameras around, there's a decent-sized crowd, there's loud music, and sort of that whole competition atmosphere. So when it comes to you know, race day, you're not going to get freaked out by it. I remember back when I was starting out, we didn't really have this much TV coverage around us, so it's something that I didn't experience until I actually got to the, to the likes of the Paralympics. It's almost racing time, so it's where the big nerves kick in and you sort of just got to put them aside and focus on your race, because if you don't, you've basically already lost the race. If you're really nervous, then you don't perform well. But I've noticed that some of the younger athletes, they seem to be really nervous. Like, it's not a bad thing, but, you know, it does help them get through the race. But, yeah, being less nervous is definitely a bonus. Now we've got the men's para 400 metre freestyle final. Jesse Reynolds and Hamish McLean are the two swimmers in this particular race. Both these boys are the only athlete in New Zealand in their class, so they swim together. Athletes are given a classification so that at international competitions, they race against swimmers of a similar physical ability. So Jesse Reynolds in the S9 category and Hamish McLean in the S6 category. Let's go, Jess! Go, Jess! Just imagine how difficult it is to control the rhythm of your body, the rotation of the shoulders and the hips, and you've only got one leg to create that uh, body rhythm and also that balance of the stroke. Made the qualifying times of PB. I'll probably rank him in maybe the top five in the world. So now we've got Hamish McLean with one length still to swim. Now he needs to go five minutes and 49.36. Hamish has to show four seconds off his previous best today. Hamish McLean giving it absolutely everything, the young man from Wanaka, the 15 year old. A massive challenge in a sport that counts time in hundreds of a second. The crowd is urging him on. He's got to go for it. McLean giving it absolutely everything. Into the wall he goes. What a swim from the 15 year old. Five minutes, 43.63 seconds. And you've got to remember he swam a PB this morning by 15 seconds. So you know, 21 seconds in one day. Good on him. How do you feel? 
I can't believe you did it, man. That was unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, it felt good. You made us all proud, mate. Yeah, it feels good. Throughout the race, I felt really sick and tired, but brought, brought it home, and then at the end, felt sick getting out of the pool, but now I've recovered from it, and feel good. Way beyond my expectations, and it was amazing, it was amazing. So as a family, we're all proud. As Hola Canarians, we're all proud, it's great. Awesome, <laughs> that's all I can say. But Hamish, tonight, he's managed to uh, do something absolutely extraordinary, and, and uh, he's had be marked down as an outside chance, but he certainly took care of that and, and proved to everyone what type of uh, young man he is. I've got to tell you, mate, you're a crowd favourite too. The guys are bringing him home. Do you actually hear that out there? You're so focused, because that last 25 metres out there, you dug it in. Yeah, yeah. Heard the crowd and just thought, just dig it, dig it in and go hard. Jesse, I know this is your favourite event, the 400, but boy, you went for it. Yeah, uh, thanks, Ian. Uh, it, was, it was a really good event. Um, I was always, always focusing on the 400, so just to bring it home like that was really good. Real happy we're going to Glasgow. That was always in the back of my mind that uh, if I didn't make that, there's another trip that I've missed, so it'll be great just to go overseas. And I haven't been to Scotland before, so it'll be a good experience. I don't think I'll be going to Worlds, even if, though I qualified, just because bit expensive and I like to go but I don't know it's whether John and Gary want me to go or not. This has just been a huge surprise so it wasn't planned. We're in a bit of shell shock of what we're doing and where we are, but uh, we would like Hamish to go, obviously, and he really wants to go. But it still sink in a bit, doesn't it? We've yeah. got to go home and talk to Dad. Yeah. Now, this is the 200 metres individual medley final. And in the back of shot there, we're in the hoodie, Sophie Pascoe. And Nikita Howarth in the SM7. Nikita's racing multiple title holder, Sophie Pascoe. But Nikita's a gutsy athlete. She's always up for the challenge. And her victory in Montreal means she's world champion in her own classification. Women's para 200 metres individual medley here at the 2015 New Zealand National Championships underway. And Sophie Pascoe powering away on that butterfly leg. Yeah, great swim here by Sophie Pascoe. Well, it's a great swim by all three of them. All of them within their own classifications, top in the world. I try to time it when she's out of the water. Go, Tom! My mother used to do a similar thing to me when I was swimming. Even though you know she's doing it, and she's doing it well, it just gives you a little bit like, hey, this is cool, I'm, I'm helping. Even though sometimes, you you know, they can't hear you, it's not a problem, but it's just nice to, nice to feel part of it sort of thing, eh? At 226.93, what a swim from Pasco. Great race here between Fisher and Howarth. Who's going to come second? Fisher's come through in the freestyle leg. Howarth 302.66, fine swim. Three para world champions in the one race. It was fantastic to see, but Nikita, we'll start with you. You're joining these girls at uh, the World Games. Um. Yeah, I guess I'm pretty excited because this will be my second World Champs and I just want to give it my best shot at going for gold, so yeah. It's pretty cool to have these two as a teammate, isn't it? Yeah, I guess they're like my older sisters. It's real cool to have them around. It's really enjoyable times. We have pretty fun times with Soph and Mary. Yeah, I get all taught all the tricks from them, so. I've come from the UK. Uh, I'm here to watch my girlfriend Georgia swim. It's, it's a big deal coming out here and to, to compete on a, on a national and well, hopefully a, a world stage. Um, yeah, I'm going to support her in, uh, in every way I can. Georgia can't really afford to make any mistakes with her race. The 50 freestyle is um, it's an event where you've got to nail your start, you've got to nail your, your finish and you've got to get everything right in between. It's such a short race that um, mistakes are measured in uh, splits of a second but so to qualifying times and not making it. Yes, it's come down to the last race basically for her, but I've got every confidence, knowing the type of girl that she is, that she can post a great time tonight. She doesn't get another chance after tonight. For her, 
it's all or nothing. And in lane five, it's Georgia Gray from North Shore. She looked a bit nervous at the start, to be honest, but I think she'll come through, and um, all we need is a 30 points, so that'll be us, and then she'll be away at Worlds. Georgia Gray already has a 31.1. This is a women's 50 metres freestyle. Pasco qualifying time 29.7 for Sophie Pasco. She hits the wall at 28.22. And in second place, Gray, 31, just outside the qualifying time for Georgia Gray. She was literally like 0.06 in the second off qualifying. Um, so yeah, absolutely got it for her. It's a good swim, just uh, not quite enough. You can't be unhappy when you PB, but I'm sure that she's going to feel that she wanted that bit extra. Better go and see it. It's a PB, but that doesn't really mean my bottom. It doesn't really mean anything. Everyone else who was expected to make the team had made the team, and um, on the one hand, you're so happy for them, but you just think, how did I, how did I mess that up? So well done, guys. High five. Well done, man. Great job. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, great that we've made the team. We start to work now. Every time we come together at a major meet, you guys are raising the bar. But congratulations once again, and I look forward to watching us develop as a team going forward and really having a very successful meet in Glasgow. So Our women's uh, medley relay team requires a, a freestyler. George's time of 109, which she did yesterday, uh, when you put that in as, a, as the fastest freestyler, it gives us a ranking in the top four or five in the world. So we'd already decided that if our time was top five, that we would probably take a relay team. And so Georgia's time means that she qualifies on the team, but she will go as a relay swimmer. Well, yeah, it wasn't the easiest way to get on the team, but yeah, <laughs> I'm so glad I'm there. <laughs> the eight strong New Zealand para team for the World Championship. been a, a great Open Championships for us. This is our biggest World Championships team. Hopefully a great launching pad for July and the World Championships. Hamish gets up at uh, 20 past five to go swimming. He's at the pool by about quarter to six to do warm-ups and then swimming at six to eight. This is my least favourite thing about swimming. Yeah. Gonna be hard today. Since Opens, Hamish has had a week off where he didn't do too much for that week and then now we're back into it pretty much just doing the same as we did um, for Opens <laughs> on our build up to Worlds. Um, it worked for Opens so do the same thing only a little bit faster and a little bit harder. Alrighty, we'll get started. 10 past 5 every morning, Monday to Friday, and never ever been a problem getting her out of bed in the morning. But yeah, time for toast and uh, Milo before she goes off to swimming. Likes your Milo quite cold so she can drink it real quick. At the age of 15, she's got a world record. That's crazy. She's at the moment number one in the world in two of her races. Multiple goals hopefully at Rio would be where she's wanting to go. She always wanted to gold at Rio. But I think now the possibility of having more than one gold is pretty awesome. So yeah, I mean, it's just pretty awesome. Okay, 
now she's a world champion, to have that extra pressure. I don't think it phases her too much. But the older she gets, the more the, more the pressure may build. You just don't know. We, we, we're keeping an eye on how she's going mentally and she seems to be pretty sorted. Okay, toes, it's almost time to go. It's 25-2. I don't know. I haven't had that great of a week of training, so yeah, just trying to get back into it now. It is seeming to get a bit better at the moment, though, so hopefully it will be better soon. Just want a break, but then, you know, I don't really need a break, so you know, I'm the only one that will do this, and if I want, if I do this, I'll I'll get the gold medal instead of the others. So you know that. Gold medal is always in the back of my mind. Hey guys, come on in. Uh, this is the flat. So here yeah, we're in the downstairs area, laundry there, uh, garage in there, and that's about it. So I'll show you the upstairs. This flat's owned by George's parents, so it's pretty nice. Uh, so in here we have the kitchen, and obviously George is here doing all the. What is she doing? Oh, Uni work? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we can see all the way over here with our nice little view. We're all kind of full-time athletes. Everyone's asleep by nine, so it's fairly boring, but that's how it's got to be. I think living in a flat with other athletes has definitely been a, a key thing for me. I set myself high goals and I, I get pretty down if I don't achieve them. I'm pretty, pretty driven. Being able to represent New Zealand is just such an honour, such an emotive thing for me. And that's also something I won't ever regret. So few people have that opportunity. I'm probably pretty hard on myself, and I always have been. In certain aspects, that led to me being successful in certain ways, but I think if you're too hard on yourself in sport, you probably don't learn. You learn so much more from your failures than you do from your wins. And each failure, although it hurts so much, like that's just another experience to look back on and be like, I don't ever want to feel that way again. <laughs> Let's step up. My boyfriend, um, mainly because he's in miserable England, so <laughs> just thought I'd show him what he's missing. <laughs> We've been together a long time, and so it was kind of agreed that we would, um, yeah, would stay together for a year and not really see much of each other. Um, and so he's going to move out, but uh, yeah, that was that was pretty pretty difficult. Um, and I had I had a place at uni over there, so I was going to do um, a masters at Cambridge, and, and yeah, had to had to give that up. And um, <laughs> so yeah, I guess I guess I gave up like education and and, and all, yeah, all my friends over there um, and things. I didn't want to look back in 10 years and say, oh my God, I should have done that because, you know, the education and, and, and the boy and the friends and stuff, they'll all, they'll all wait and they'll still be around, but I won't, I won't ever be this fit and I won't be, ever be in the shape I am to sort of be able to swim like this. Honestly. I am. I want to be. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. You're a swimmer. Swimmers are allowed to go fast and then out of the pool. Yeah, we've got to be safe though, eh? I am safe. I'm only going 90k. Good job. Oh, man. That was quite sore on the back. Nikita works really hard, but she also complains really hard. Good. Six. So I like gym better because, I don't know, don't get wet. <laughs> I do like getting wet, but it's just nice to have a couple of gym sessions out of water. It's like a fish out of water, it doesn't really normally happen, but it's good having a couple of gym sessions to just keep my self sane. You got it? Nice. Feeling tight. 
Come on. Nearly like there. Up. Ouch. There's been lots more people saying hello to me nowadays and that people have been more like nicer to me and been recognizing more for my sport sport and um yeah it's been really cool. Oh. So how did you think the mass internal went? It was alright. Uh, we're in PE, we're playing Turbo Touch uh, with my class at level one, and yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm not very good on the whole, uh, not very good at anything really, but I try my hardest and it works sometimes. He just gives everything a go, 100%. His biggest strength is his perseverance. He lets nothing hold him back. <laughs> I've been swimming since I was five years old, since Mum and Dad wanted me to learn how to swim. They said when I could beat them, I could stop swimming. But when I started to beat them, I started to go to bigger competitions and start getting to meet the Paralympic people. Really liked that, and so I kept on going. Caitlin, Caitlin! I think it's just proving that I can do it, instead of being that guy who can't do it. You can give everything, but if you're just not good enough, you're not good enough. If you go in and, and you lose or you don't qualify and that just becomes an endless cycle and you think, what more do I have to give? Like, I don't have anything left. It, it's so difficult to deal with the highs and lows around that. But if you tick every single box and you, you do it correctly, then you might not be the gold medalist at the end of the day, but you will be able to get out of the pool and say, I did everything right. And if it's not meant to be, then it's not meant to be. So when the swimmers actually step on the blocks, all they're focusing on now is the race. Most swimmers will either pick a spot that they're going to try and hit when they dive in, and they'll be looking to try and get straight out there on that dive. Some will be looking at the black line and they'll almost be trying to imagine tunnel vision, that they're the only people in the race, nothing else on either side of them. A lot of swimmers will be focusing on the black square at the far end of the pool, and that will be their target that they'll be aiming at. Once a race starts, it doesn't matter whether it's a 50 metre race or a 400 metre race, they should go into automatic pilot. At the end of the day, we want perfect starts, but we would rather be safe and in, and in the game than, than to overdo it, right girls? It's the first competitive relay we've kind of put out, so uh, it'll be really exciting to be a part of, and um, <laughs> I'm trying to hold my end of the bargain um, and finish it off. Yeah, no pressure. We've got five world-ranked number one swimmers in our squad, so if you're in our team, you're good. And we needed to stress that to Georgia that, you know, yes, you've only made the relay this time, but th that makes you a good swimmer. I mean, the other three girls are really kind of top of their game, and I've just slotted in as the freestyle swimmer, so it's pretty, it's really cool for me to be part of. Sophie doesn't train here, uh, and Nikita doesn't train here regularly, so this is our last chance to do that. We'll get this practice today, and we won't get another one until we're in Glasgow. Georgia's swimming the fight, the anchor leg, the final leg of the medley relay, which is the last event on the last day. We need to make up some time in the relay if we're going to win a medal, quite a lot. So the starts, we want to try and get our takeovers as perfect as possible. This is Bex. Here's Toes. Here's Bex. It's tight, isn't it? It looked, it's a lot tighter than it looked. I thought it was all right. I was like, yeah, it's no problem. Jodie was like, it's probably the perfect changeover. Oh, Georgia. Yeah, We're still in the race. That's all right. But in all fairness to Georgia, she's been trying to spot where Sophie's coming in. So you've just got to adjust a little bit again. It's only a little bit away from just getting it right, OK? It's not that far off. Let's do it again. It's really difficult because it all looks the same. Like, it's all white water with a head coming through it. And, like, the difference between getting it right and getting it wrong is head of a second. Even when you're in the water, you don't know if you've judged it right. So that's going to be the real test. 
in the, the, the women's relay, the difference between silver, bronze and fourth place have been less than a second. Three good changeovers can get you a silver medal, three bad changeovers out of the medal, so it's, it's as tight as that. This is the um, Hagley School of Fashion. This is a two-year course, so this is my first year this year. I have a bit of a passion for it and I haven't made many classes, but um, I'm really lucky that Vicky supports me with my swimming and that's gonna come first. And this is obviously just to balance the other side of life. But it is hard to balance it at times, obviously. I have the dedication within swimming. I think I have it outside of the pool as well, so I'm determined to get this finished. Staying at the top, um, it's, yeah, it's a lot of hard work. I'm down at the pool 10 sessions a week for gym sessions. You know, I have an ultimate goal of being a world champion and staying on top of the world, and it's harder to be the hunted rather than coming out of nowhere and doing it once. So, yeah, staying on the top is, um, yeah, I'm lucky enough to have the likes of Rolly who, you know, is down the pool, step, pool deck with me and both have the same mind frame and the same goal, so. You know, I don't know how many laps I've done in a pool over how many years I've been swimming now, but a week's work is uh, close to about, you know, 20 to 30 hours a week of physical training. Right, straight into the 216s. There's plenty of days that um, I haven't wanted to go train, but you always have to think about what your opposition's doing around the world, and there's always going to be new people that are coming into it. You know, yeah, it's a love-hate relationship at times, but I haven't felt, you know, why am I doing this? The day I question, you know, why am I doing this will be the day that I finish, but not many people can class themselves the world champion. OK, we've got 100 free on two. Today is a really hard training compared to normal because it's Saturday morning and John has to, you know, push us to our hardest on Saturday morning and I just kind of hope I will get to, like, exhaustion point where I just feel knackered and have given it my 100% all. Now, look, it's hard today. It's a hard set. It's our big set of the week as far as I'm concerned and I want to see a significant change. We've had a pretty hard week of training, so we're all pretty buggered anyway, but no, it'll be, it'll be good fun anyway. It's like halfway through, you kind of just want to kill yourself because you've got 15 left and you've only done 15. It's actually just like a mental game because it gets to the point where you can't swim any faster, so you just have to be like, knuckle down and actually do it. Um, so that's, that's the breaking point. You might see tears, that'd be great. <laughs> Water is not going to get any wetter, so let's get in. Ready, two, one. Hup. Two eight, thirty-five eight. Well done. They're probably feeling a little bit sorry for themselves right now, but they're going quite nicely. It's about holding their technique at high speed. Thirty-three six. Good. You go, Nikita. Come on. Keep working. It's great. Come on. I just gotta, you know, I gotta keep going and push myself because at the end of the day I know that if I put 100% effort in I'm going to get 100% you know, effort out of my training and stuff so I just got to push myself as hard as I can. And... Come on, keep working, keep working. Jesse, you've got to really force your technique to work for you. Just sheer effort won't work. Pretty shattered at the moment but how else would you want to spend your Saturday morning? Felt pretty naked towards the end but you know that's normal for hard morning swim so yeah pretty happy with it. Really pleased with that. It's a set that I'll use as a baseline now to, to build from for the rest of the campaign into the World Championships. I won't tell them that I'm really pleased, but I am. <laughs>
<laughs> We're off to a flying start. Okay, a little bit of housekeeping events, which is obviously starting tomorrow. Morning heat session starts at 10 o'clock. Afternoon finals are at 6. Only swimwear approved by IPC Swimming will be permitted to be worn. Body advertising, including tattoos and symbols, is not allowed. They've all done very well. They've all really exceeded where I thought they were. But, of course, you know, there's that big unknown factor, it's called the competition. Once that self-belief starts coming, then they can conquer anything. And uh, I think we're really finding ourselves in that situation now that we really do honestly believe that this team is going to have great success. And that's been my mission since day one, is to instill that belief. men's 400 metres freestyle S6. This one is going to be very tight. Hamish has never been to a major international before. How will he react to well, it? We don't know, but um, it will be better for it, whatever happens. Darren McDonald, the Paralympic champion from Ireland. Hamish McLean from New Zealand. I've never been to a meet this big, and it's quite unreal that I made it this far in swimming, and it feels feel very proud. I think we're going to be in for quite a close contest here. Hamish swam at PB in his heat, so he'd actually achieved uh, his goal for the meet. Making the final was a, is a bonus. He's very, very good at uh, um, executing a plan. He has been up to now, but of course, let's see how uh, how the nerves affect him in this final. The long-time leader, Bocchiardo, is holding on now. In the last five, Granishka coming up alongside Bocchiardo. What a finish here. It is going to go to Bocchiardo. He's taking it. Go to Italy. Hamish has picked his game up. That's another PB, and that's really, really a well-executed race. My goal is to go to Tokyo as my biggest goal, but right now I'm focusing on PBs, and I've just done one, so it's great. It's quite unreal that I made it this far in swimming, and it feels feel very proud. Here are the finalists. Jesse Reynolds, the 18-year-old, had a good qualification. The New Zealand team doing really well here. Surprisingly, I wasn't actually that nervous this morning. Not entirely sure why. I had a, had a great sleep last night. Jesse, not that far away from these big guys. Being in lane five, right next to the world record holder, I, mean, I know that he's got a lot of uh, respect for it. Well, there's Brendan Hall starting on that one leg. Now, as a general rule, if you have two legs, you have a better start, and that is very, very useful in the sprint events. But when it comes to the distance events, much, much more handy to have two good working arms. I just wanted Jess to carry on where he'd left off in the morning, try to get another PB, and if that was good enough for a medal, so be it. But I did suspect that there were a few boys in there that we're going to swim a hell of a lot faster than they did in the morning. Brendan Hall will take this one. It's gold to Brendan Hall. Yeah, so that, that definitely hurt quite a lot. <laughs> Not too phased about the pacing. Um, I mean, that's, that's top six, which is better than what I was. So I can now say I'm fifth in the world, which is awesome. It'll, it'll really help with funding and all that stuff. So, no, that's awesome. Yeah, looking towards Rio, I think it'll just be bringing that time down. I think I'll, I'll definitely drop some more time off this year and come back in Rio and hopefully get a chance for a medal. The great Sophie Pascoe, five times a world champion at Montreal. Who is it going to go to? Well, just 0.91 of a second separating lanes at one to seven in qualification. Oriel Lee rebound in lane number four has just got the lead, but also going well is Rhea Bova. And it's 
seven for Aureli Rivard. She will take the gold medal for Canada. And the bronze goes to the world record holder, Sophie Pascoe. Sophie Pascoe? Well, she's going to be wondering what happened. She's leaving with the bronze, but she finished in 28 flat. I gave it my best and I'm proud of the time, so you can't complain. I think if you'd have looked back 20 years ago, maybe, you would have seen much more single dominance from a single swimmer. And now, Sophie Pascoe, you know, she's won so many gold medals, world championships. Here she is, she turns in an amazing time, gets the bronze. It's, it's challenging out there. who can challenge the world record holder in lane number four. Maybe it's this young lady, Aureli Rivard, already a champion in 50 freestyle. Take your marks. Sophie Pascoe, two, three here in the heats this morning, the great New Zealand champion. She was the champion here 12 months ago in the Commonwealth Games. She's made a very good start. Aureli Rivard of Canada will be second as they finish the 50 button line. And, well, she's making the best of the rest look very ordinary indeed. She's so strong in her core, it produces this very, very balanced breaststroke that we're seeing right here in the centre of our screens. She's absolutely superb, Sophie Pascoe. Here comes Sophie Pascoe, 25 metres to go for the great New Zealand swimmer. Sophie Pascoe's going to get another gold medal for New Zealand. It was a superb performance from Pascoe outside the world record, but a gold medal for Sophie Pascoe, 226.51. Championship record swim for Sophie Pascoe. You can see that one really hurt her. She put a lot into that. Yeah, hardest race yet. Look, I gave it everything. Um, came out with a gold for New Zealand, so. The team from New Zealand. Well, first time we've seen a New Zealand women's team in an international competition, and they are looking forward to this one. Well, it's a good start across the board. Alice Ty from Great Britain. It is Great Britain over in first, 0.24 of a second. It's a new team. Let's be honest, they know each other really well, but they've not swum together before. Really, the idea of this relay is to get them together so that they can be ready for Rio. We don't have any real expectation on the relay. You know, as far as we're concerned, we know we're the uh, outside smokers. So our girls can just get on with swimming their race. They haven't got to worry too much about what's happening inside. And let's see if we can surprise a few people. They're coming now into the final change of this medley relay. Here's the touch. Oh! It's not a great change from Great Britain. They've cost time there. Definitely between Great Britain and Australia. Patterson moving into second place. Rogers has the advantage. Patterson has the class advantage. This is going to be absolutely to the wire, Paul. Well, 15 metres to go. Susie Rogers is hanging on. The yellow cap of Patterson is closing. It's not going to be enough, though. It's going to be gold to Great Britain. Susie The result of the women's 4x100 metres medley relay. We didn't really expect much, so it's good that we came out with such a good result, you know. Yes. Well, we don't train together or anything, so we've got a year to figure out how to make it a lot faster, so, which I think is something we can definitely do. I'm so glad to be here. I wouldn't have been happy sitting at home and, and being able to finish off the relay. Maybe not as fast as we'd like, but, but what we could do was really special. And yeah, hopefully we can work on it next year, for next year. Finalists for the women's 200 metres individual medley for the SM7 class. Nikita Hauer far ahead of the rest of the field. Um, I am ranked first, but you know, we'll see how that goes. Every, every race is tough, so just got to do my best. 
Makeda's a real racer. This is the arena that she thrives in. She's quite ruthless and ready to go for the kill, so to speak. What a nice dolphin action. Arms come over, very, very separate. Feet really fill in the power gaps between the arms. It's not bad around the wall, and she's quite good in the underwater section. But certainly up first on this backstroke, and a nice rolling backstroke. Courtney Jordan is now going past Nikita Howarth there. Courtney Jordan takes the lead for the USA, but Nikita Howarth, a good turn, immediately regains the lead for New Zealand. Well, look at this. Well, they say the medley is all about the breaststroke. And look at how Nikita Howarth of New Zealand is making the rest of the field pay here, right through the nose. Hands coming over, or shall I say, stump arms coming over. Well, it's her against the clock now for the gold. Tough standard, 248.43. Nikita Howard has just blown everyone away on that breaststroke leg. Here comes Nikita Howard with 15 metres to go. They are closing, but the breaststroke leg has done the damage for the New Zealander. And Nikita Howard is on her way to regain her own world title. Nikita Howard takes it. Wow, what a devastating breaststroke from Nikita Howard. She will be ecstatic to retain that world title. I did want it really bad, you know. From day one, you've got to kind of believe in yourself that like we no one else does. And, you know, I just sort of took it from the heart and went for it. And she did swim awesome. Yeah. She was just a second off her PB. Um, but retaining her world champion status is Yes, it's cool. Fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. She was yelling really loud. She's just such a proud mum, eh? It's just great to have that sort of support. Representing New Zealand, Nikita Howard. She won it as a 14-year-old two years ago. World Championship, she has retained her title. to be up there with my girls and it's a great experience to hear the national anthem played for yourself. It's pretty cool. It's been very, very successful. We've seen a, a definite closing of the gaps uh, from our, the experience side of things, uh, really good. From the, uh, the newcomers or the, the up and coming swimmers, uh, it's been quite uh, exceptional. I think everybody is absolutely 100% fired up and looking forward to Rio next year. Attitude was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.